we'll start off with a very simple example. So we're going to take an edit point curve. We're going to have degree two. So we'll get three CVs on this. And I'm just using Alt to pick a couple of points on the grid there so that we can see there's a mid CV there that we can now move around. So if I go into the transform CV menu and I'm picking one CV and I'm moving it in X, Y, and Z, I can then move that up and down as I, as I want to. Let's first of all, put the curvature on there. So complete, completely flat line, completely straight line. So the curvature is not going to be too surprising. Got min and max on, it says it's one, which isn't right. Um, but when I start to move that CV around, you'll see that some more realistic values come up and you can see it says the minimum and the maximum radius values are there are pretty similar. So it's almost circular, but not quite as I move that point up. So we can say that we've got uniform spacing of the CVs here and we've got constant curvature effectively, or at least visually. Now, if we wanted to introduce some acceleration into that curvature, in other words, make it get tighter towards one end, then we can simply move that CV across to one end. So this is what we mean when we talk about bunching of CVs, that we're actually reducing the spacing between these CVs in order to get the curvature value that we want. So let's make that a bit bigger like that. So this is one way of achieving that sort of shape is to just bunch the CVs. Let's go back to our edit point curve. So I'm gonna pick those points again, same starting point. This time, rather than doing a bunching of the CVs, we're gonna try and keep the CVs quite uniform. And so we'll start off by taking the CV off there so we can see a bit more clearly. And I'm going to increase, well, first of all, I'm gonna move that point up in the Z direction. So not surprisingly, we're not gonna get the shape that we want. Now, if I increase the degree, by one, I can move that point up and we can get a bit closer to that curve. In fact, this isn't quite uniform. It's, it's sort of closing up the gap um, here. So we can actually move that to the right and we still say that that's pretty uniform. This one ought to also be slightly moved to the right and I'm not gonna measure the distance there, but visually that's a little bit closer. Difficult to see, to be honest, but if I now take that curve and I increase the degree again. So let's make it four. And I'm gonna move that point. Now it's slightly to the right and up. You can see we're getting closer and closer to this other curve, the one with the with this simply three CVs on it. I'll put the curvature display on it and you can see what's happening there. And then once more, we'll increase the degree to five. So we can keep this fairly uniform spacing of CVs as long as we increase the degree. And you can see we're getting a similar curvature here. I'm sort of slightly pushing that towards the right hand side, so slightly bunching it maybe. But like I say, it's not something that you actually go and measure the distance between these points. It's just an, you do it by eye. So let's just move that one slightly up and see if we can get the curvature pretty much the same. So we've managed to achieve the same shape as we did with the previous curve, except that we've had to use a degree six to do this, whereas the previous curve was only degree two. So you can see that the, the curve with the low number of CVs, let's separate those out and then we can compare the two. So the one where we've allowed a lot of bunching, we've got the same shape, but we've done it in three points, whereas this one's using seven points and um, so this is a more efficient solution to creating that shape. And this is why people often use bunching. There is a halfway house between this, which is to do a little bit of bunching, maybe increase the degree a bit, but not as much as this. So those are our options.